So in the third part of this unit, we're going to talk about ways when you're doing string interpolation, you could control exactly how that string is being formatted. So um, the, the reason for not to use one of the reasons for not using concatenation and the string casting is you have no control exactly how the, the string is being formatted. So you have no way of controlling the number of floating point decimal places you're using for a floating point number. Um, if you're especially for working computer codes and you want to print out integers, you might want to print it out in binary or octal or hexadecimal as much as you might want to print it out in decimal. And there's no simple way of controlling that with the, the standard string formatting, uh, string casting. So Python provides a mechanism for controlling how a value is converted to a string. Um, and this is actually something that's inherited from the C programming language. Um, so this is um, uh, uses a, a specially constructed formatting code that tells Python how to do that conversion um, from a numerical value, normally a numerical value, and translating it into a string during the interpolation. So the string formatting codes um, can be can look quite daunting. It's fairly complex um, uh, structure of, of how you to create them. Um, uh, they are fully documented on the uh, on the Python documentation, and if you're on the uh, look at the PDF or notebook value version of these notes, then um, that link there is um, the link to the documentation page uh, for version 3.9 of Python. Um, but here we're going to go over just some of the basics to give you a, a, a sort of you know 90 percent of the time you only need to know the, the basics in in order to get a, a reasonably acceptable result. So we start. Uh, by looking at the conversion code letter. So this is used to um, tell Python how it should go and convert a, um, a type of variable into some sort of output value. And so that letter code has to be appropriate for the type of variable you're trying to convert, uh, as well as controlling what the output's going to look like. So um, the letter codes we have if we're looking at trying to format a floating point number, well, um, there's the F code, so the big or little F, and those are used to convert a floating point number to a fixed number of decimal places. So you can think of the F as standing for fixed. Um, uh, the difference between capital F and little f is whether the uh, things which aren't numbers, like not a number and infinity, are printed out in capitals or lowercase. So nearly all the time you end up using lowercase f, but the cap big F exists. Uh, alternatively, you could use e, either big or little e, um, and that is used for printing things out in scientific notation, but which we mean mantissa and exponent. And so the e stands for the exponent, and it's that format you get when you print out when you get a number and you write it down as some number of digits e, and then uh, the the power that ten is raised to for that number. And the difference there is simply whether uh, the E used when printing out the exponent uh, indicator is, is a big or a little E. Um, and then we have G, big or little G, which is used as what's called a general format. And that means it's switching between using F and E formats, depending on how big the number is. So one of the problems with F is that if you try printing out a uh, either a very, very big or a very, very small number, it can look pretty unpleasantly messy. Um, whereas, of course, in reality, you know, we, we know that you'd normally go and switch from um, writing numbers um, just as a sequence of digits to writing them in scientific notation when they get to be too big or too small. And so the G format goes and does that for you. It switches. And then finally, there's an N format which is basically the same as the G format, except that it pays attention to whatever your local regional language settings are for things like what character uses the decimal point. So on the continent, in many places, they use a comma as the decimal point, um, and what character you use for separating thousands. Um, so again, in, in the UK, we tend to use the comma to separate out thousands and, and uh, millions um, to make the numbers easier to read, whereas on the continent, they tend to use full stop. So um, it just does whatever the local settings would accept which should be a correct number. So here's an example of uh, formatting the um, uh, uh, floating, uh, flo uh, formatting a floating point number with each of those formats. 
So you'll see here I'm using an F string and the placeholder all refers to the value to the variable number. And then the formatting code is given by putting a colon and then the format letter afterwards. So I have a colon F, a colon E, um, a, and then a colon um, G um, a couple of times over. And I'm showing you here how it's switching um, as the magnitude of the number changes from in the G formatting from being a floating point number to going into scientific notation. Um, and this syntax where you put the placeholder and then colon and the format code works for F strings and it works for um, the dot format method. And in fact, the same letter codes are what's being used with the percent symbol uh, placeholders when we use the uh, modulus operator um, uh, in, in for converting, for doing string interpolation. OK, so then for uh, integers, um, uh, there again, there are several codes. These are all mainly about converting it in different bases. The default, the, the kind of default one, the D, is just converting it as, as a base 10 number. Um, but then you can also produce it in uh, binary or octal or hexadecimal. Um, uh, and then the difference for hexadecimal with the little x and big x is whether it's capital or lowercase uh, a, b, c, d, e, and f for the, the digits in hexadecimal that are bigger than uh, nine. Uh, and then C will print out whatever character corresponds to that integer code number um, in your string. And again, we can do a, a simple example here. We can we can create an integer variable and we can uh, go and uh, print it out in its various bases uh, and also go and show that it corresponds to the asterisk symbol. If you don't bother using conversion code, um, what's the default? Um, so for floating point numbers, generally uh, the letter code G is assumed. Um, for integers, generally a D is, is assumed. And for everything else, there's actually another uh, conversion code, which is S, which just means cast it as a string. Um, and so that's basically doing the same thing as, um, uh, as, as STR would do. OK, so we've looked at how we can control um, some aspects of the conversion with a letter code. Um, obviously, one of the things they said we wanted to be able to go and do was control, particularly floating point numbers, the number of decimal places that we had. And so we need to be able to go and control the precision that's being used. Um, and this is done uh, by, in your conversion code, before the letter, so after the colon in the F string, but before you put the letter, putting a full stop and then the number of decimal places that you want after the decimal point. So in this case, we're printing out our floating point number to three decimal places by making the conversion code 0.3F. So the 0.3 says I want the decimal point and I want three digits after that. And then the F is saying this is a floating point number uh, in um, fixed, in fixed uh, notation. Um, so that's that's how that that's working. The precision is going in in front of the immediately in front of the conversion code. And then another thing you might want to go and do is you might want to go and specify a minimum width in which to go and put that number in. Um, so you might want to make sure that your string leaves enough space uh, and always leaves a fixed amount of space to put the number in. Um, so in other words, if the uh, number, the value you're trying to print out um, is too short for the space you can, for the field width you specify is going to add extra spaces in to pad it out. So um, in that case, then we simply put the width of the um, field ahead in front of the precision specifier. So in this case example here, I'm saying I'm doing 8.3 F. So that's translated as reading it from the back is I want a floating point in fixed decimal place format notation. I want three decimal places and I want the overall width, including the decimal point to be eight characters. And so when you see I print that out, it has some extra spaces around the number um, to make it up to a fixed width of eight characters. 
OK, if I'm printing out really, really big numbers and I'm printing them out in, in fixed format, I might want to, say, put some commas in in order to go and separate out the millions and the thousands um, from the, the hundreds and the tens and the units, uh, just as if you're writing a large number out um, sort of longhand. And so I can do that by um, putting, again, ahead of everything else I had so far, a comma. So in this case here, I've specified I want this this floating point number. I've multiplied it up by 10 to the power 8 in order to make it a big floating point number. Um, and then I've said, reading it from the end, I want it formatted as a fixed point floating point number with three decimal places. And then the comma is used to say, I want to put commas between the thousands and the, the hundreds of tens of units and the thousands, and then between, again, between the millions. And so you can see here, it printed out with, with commas. And I can also do the same, but with underscores rather than commas. And that's simply done by replacing the comma in the format specifier with an underscore. Now, you might ask, well, why would I want to go and do that? Um, because, I mean, well, if I'm going to use commas, why, why use underscores? And that's actually because um, Python allows you to write numbers with underscores embedded in them. Um, so in this case here, for example, I've written a um, pi multiplied by some large number, um, and I've put in underscores when I'm writing the code. So this is me defining a number in Python, and I'm putting those underscores in. And Python will um, happily ignore all the underscores in the middle of a, in the middle of a number. And in fact, Python doesn't care what those underscores are. It just simply ignores them. So you could separate out every single digit with an underscore if you really wanted. Um, it wouldn't necessarily help make your code any more readable. But you can see here that, that Python has just simply read that as a, as a straightforward number. So that becomes a useful thing if you've got to write down a large constant into your code. Um, uh, so if, for example, you were specifying the speed of light to um, the nearest meter per second, um, expanding the full value, you might say, put the underscores in there just to help you write it out and keep track of it. Um, and then we can do things that we can, um, rather than uh, padding uh, the the number when we make a, a field that's too that's, that's bigger than the, the length needed for the number, we can pad it out with extra zeros. Um, and you might want to do this, for example, if you want to make sure that the, the string you're producing is going to sort correctly um, in order. Um, even though it's it's a string. So for example, if you wanted to go and have um, digits one, two, three, four, five, uh, going up to 10, in order to make that search, that sort correctly, it's better to write it as a zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, and so on to get zero, nine, and then 10, 11, 12. Um, and so in order to go and do that, you simply um, put a zero ahead of the width of the field you've specified. Um, so again, working from the end, um, this is a fixed point, floating point um, number with three decimal places in a field width of eight and padding it up with extra zeros. And then you can see that's what we've gone and produced. Um, you might also want to go and force um, the sign to always be present. So make sure you put plus signs in front of positive numbers as well as minuses in front of negative numbers. Um, and so uh, you can do that by putting a plus sign in front of the, the width of the field. So again, reading from the end, this is a floating point number, three decimal places, fixed width of eight with a plus sign. And then you can join all of this together and you can also add in extra code, the extra, there's extra sim, uh, uh, symbols for uh, centering the code and uh, padding it with things other than zeros. Um, and you can make a really quite complicated example like I've done here, where the, the format code reading from the end of it is it's a fixed point, floating point number with two decimal places um, with uh, commas, um, surrounding the um, the thousands and the millions and so on in a field width of 16, always displaying the positive sign. The circumflex then says um, to center it and the stars are used to go and pad any remaining space out. And so you can see there, I've ended up with that number 
uh, centered in in amongst some asterix and amongst some stars with the correct formatting. Um, it does, however, get to the point where it gets really a little bit tricky to read it. So again, sometimes it's better not to go. Just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should go and do it um, unless you have a good reason to.